I was 24 years old. I had a car, an apartment, a job. Everything in life to make you happy, right? Well, one day something happened. And for the first time in my life, I had to really think. Look, Sarah, you're going to have to answer the phone quicker than that, you know. Yes, sir. All right, Sarah, put the phone down and let's try it again. Yes, sir. That's the way, Sarah, that's the way. Good, good. Look, Sarah, could you come in with your pad of pencil? Yes, sir. All right. when he said the infringement of right is right is something that happens and has positive existence in the external world, though inherently it is nothing at all. Excuse, the... me, excuse me, Professor. Um, Hegel, is that H-E-G-E-L? That's right, Sarah. German philosopher. You know, Sarah, there are more important things to life than spelling. Don't interrupt my thoughts again, Sarah. Where was I? Though inherently it is nothing at all. Nothing at all, right. The uh, manifestation of its nullity is the appearance also in the external world. This is the right actualized, the necessity of the right mediating itself, or with itself, or for itself, or by itself, or between itself, by uh, annihilating uh, what has infringed it. Yes. I have that in triplicate, Sarah. Um, is this in quotation marks, sir? <laughs> is this in quotation marks? <laughs> I like that, sir. I really do. <laughs> That'll be all, Sarah. <laughs> yes, sir. Sarah, did you mail those letters I gave you? Yes, sir, I did. And what about the library books? Have you got them yet? Well, I haven't had a chance. You see, you didn't order them at the proper Look, time. Look, Sarah, I need obscure. those books. I'm tired of listening to your excuses. Get them. Uh, oh. uh, George. Yeah, it's Sarah. Listen, is there any way I can get Durndall's books? I know, but uh, I'm putting on hold. Yes, sir? Sarah, 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 listen. The, the, the word in the last sentence is not annihilating, Sarah. It's annulling, Sarah. Have you talked to Sarah, Sarah? No, sorry, Sarah, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's annulling. Annulling. Oh, good, good. Oh, uh, Sarah, did uh, my wife call? No, sir, she didn't. Oh. Oh, well, uh, did Marlene call? Uh, no, she didn't either. Oh. Oh, all right, Sarah. Oh, all right. Uh, George, are you still there? Yeah, listen, I, I mean, uh, well, I'll have to call you back. Yes, sir? Sarah, could you get me a coffee, please? Yes, sir. And uh, what about the library books? Have you got them yet? Well, I'm working on it. Oh, good, good. And what about the typing? Have you, have you finished that? Well, I haven't had a chance. You just dictated well, it to me. Well, bring in what you've typed, Sarah. Yes, sir. All right. 
Did you have salami for lunch? Uh, Sarah? Yes, sir. Is, uh, is this a joke, Sarah? A joke? Yeah, a joke. Ha, 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 joke. <laughs> you see, Sarah, there's, uh, <laughs> there's no punctuation in any of this. <laughs> well, it doesn't make any sense, Sarah. <laughs> well, then, no, sir, it didn't make oh, sense. Of course it makes sense. Don't you understand anything? This is Hegel. Sarah, you're a dumb, broad, lazy, ignorant, and stupid, Sarah, stupid. Now, Sarah, take this report, type it up again, and bring it back to me correctly punctuated. Do it. Man who is Professor Durndal's new tutorial assistant. Tutorial assistant? assistant. Yeah. Oh. That's my old job, tutorial secretary. They just changed the name because it's a man. Oh, oh never mind, Sarah. What's in a name? A rose is a rose is a rose. Yeah, but that rose probably gets more money. Why doesn't somebody complain? Why doesn't somebody complain, Arthur? For God's sake, we've complained three or four times. Nobody does anything. That's the problem. Well, it's time there were some changes around here. Believe me. Look, look, look at me now. Now, where have I ever gotten this place? Now, I've been here 15 years, eh? Now, when I first started here, by cracky, I had a lot of ambition. And when I went into Johnson's office, I thought I was getting my first break. Oh, uh, hi, Mr. Johnson. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm Ursula Waters, your new secretary. Oh, oh, Ursula. Oh, well, uh, just uh, shove some of that junk aside, dear, and put your bag down anywhere. It doesn't matter around oh, here. What are in all those envelopes, Mr. Johnson? Oh, I don't know. They come from downstairs somewhere. Hey, do you know what you've got here? Mm -hmm. These are computer runoff sheets. They're what? Mm, they're very important to this department. Hello, Johnson here. What? Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, 62, uh, 63. Uh, just a minute. Uh-huh. Uh, temporary help and a banquet for Uh, well, I'll have to call you back with that information. Uh, yeah. oh, okay. Bye-bye. Uh, Ursula. Yes? Look around and see if you can find the budget for 62 and 63, dear. And uh, uh, tell me how much we spent on temporary help and banquet facilities. Uh, 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 yes. Oh, and, and look around for a brown leather glove. My wife left it in here yesterday. I don't know where it is. I'll be glad to, Mr. Johnson. Uh, if you just tell me, where's your record keeping system? You're in it. <laughs> well, whatever you call a system that keeps track of your expenditures, you know, that tells you whether you're on budget or off. Oh, we just wait till the end of the year, dear, and muddle through. <laughs> okay, Mr. Johnson, look, um, uh, just just leave things, and, and I'll see if I can find that information you oh, wanted. Oh, and, whatever uh, you like, dear. I spent two whole years working in that department and pulling it up, up from a mess. I, 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 I did the work of an accountant, I established my own bookkeeping system. <laughs> and what do you think happened? Excuse me, Mr. Johnson. Yes, dear. I just wanted to explain the system of bookkeeping that's set up for the department. This? Now, you can tell at a glance, you know, where the department stands from week to week. Um, under here is the community this service. Is wonderful, John. And, and wonderful. temporary help. No, I, and, Ursa, uh, I've just got to tell you. Oh? Uh, because of the, the efficiency of this department in the last year, uh, oh. because of your hard work and uh, our little system here, I've been kicked upstairs. <laughs> Well, congratulations, Mr. Johnson. Well, I'm very pleased. Ursula, you know, it's all due to your good oh. work, dear. This is just wonderful. Well, if you really feel that way, Mr. Johnson, if you really feel that I have done a good job, mm -hmm. would you recommend me for a raise and supervisor of this department? I'm oh, going to school next. A supervisor. And, and, and I know well, I can now, do the work. Ursula, but... I'm afraid that position oh. has already been filled by a, a man, a Mr. Hamilton Biggs. A, I, I really don't think you have the qualifications, dear, for the job. And well, I've been doing uh, as it. to the raise, I, I'm afraid you're going to have to ask the new supervisor, Mr. Biggs, when he arrives. 
Well, I asked Mr. Biggs, you know, for a raise, a promotion, and so on. Yeah. Oh, he said, oh, uh, he had to consider it, you know. He'd only been there a little oh. while, et cetera, et cetera, baloney, you know. <laughs> but he made sure that he went up the ladder. Now, that was six years ago. And he never did do anything for me except take me along with him because, you know, I knew the ropes. But here I am. I'm still a secretary. Hey, did you hear about Flossie Gallagher? No. Mm -hmm. What? Well, oh, about her? well, you know, she's a secretary to uh, Professor Smith. Yes. Yeah. yeah and uh, he got promoted and she got demoted. Sam, is that true? Well, I'm going to go in and see Smalley about Flossie. Mm -hmm. oh, good for you. Yeah. Edgar Smalley, I want to talk to you. What is all this about Flossie Gallagher being demoted? Do you know how hard that girl has worked for the past seven years for Stewie Smith? She did everything for that man but burp him. Now, she deserves to be upgraded right along with him. And I want to know why someone else got that job. Now then, Ursula, what seems to be the trouble? Oh, why was Flossie Gallagher demoted? I know no such thing. She wasn't demoted. She was merely transferred to another department. Oh, Edgar, don't hand me that baloney. I've been around here too long. She's back now to earning what she was making two years ago. Now, that isn't a demotion. I don't know what you call it. Well, I'll be perfectly frank with you, Ursula. You see, Flossie didn't have the outgoing personality. Edgar, as head of personnel, you had her in your power to prevent this happening, and I want to know what you're going to do about it now. Ursula, when you're head of this department, you may do as you please. Till then, I run this show. Get out. Edgar, management can only push us so far, and you have just about reached the limit. You haven't heard the last of this, I assure you. So we decided that we had to find out what the rest of the staff felt about unionization. Uh, we were just a very small group of people, and because the staff association elections were coming up, we thought that it might be a good idea to run a slate of candidates on a union platform and turn the staff association into a union. Hi! Oh, Marty! Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready some coffee? Well, it isn't that nice. Well, well, there's my cup. Oh, good. I just got a cup. <laughs> I just love it up here in the <laughs> residence office. Oh, well, uh, no, I'm not the president yet, Bobby. I'm, <laughs> I'm just the uh, vice president. Hmm? Oh. Something along the lines of infiltration, mind, Smalley. Uh, we need a thick. 
Think? Yeah, just the man in mind. Dead, dead. Uh, who is he? Frank Orson, sir. Public relations. And where is he? In my pocket, sir. Well, good. Have him up here, then. Yes, sir. Wilson, come on up. Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, Mr. Wilson, I understand that you used to be president of the Staff Association. Is that correct? Is that correct, Wilson? Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Wilson, there seems to be some um, uh, an unfortunate talk about uh, unionization within the uh, Staff Association. Ah. Uh, uh, and contempt of authority will not be tolerated. Is that clear, Wilson? Good, good. Now, uh, Wilson, you see, uh, I seem to uh, need your assistance. And I need to know who the ringleaders are, what they're up to, and when, Wilson. When? What do you think you're going to help me, Wilson? Can you, Wilson? Can you? Yes, sir. You can help me, sir. Good, good. Well, then, tally ho, then. Tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho. Tally ho. Okay, Flossie, now what's oh. all the trouble? You sounded hysterical on the phone. Oh, yeah, well, Ursula, um, you see, I feel that, that there must have been a reason uh, why I was demoted, and, uh, well... Oh, it, come it, on. No, really, if, if I got involved with this union thing, then, um, oh, they'd fire me. Look, you've got nothing to worry about. They cannot legally fire anyone for organizing. Now, that's the law. Oh. Oh, hi. Uh, listen, uh, can you tell me everything you know about the union? Rigo? <laughs> oh, you're foreign. Oh, oh, union. Scusi, me, you don't capisco. Oh, uh, oh, uh, union. 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 Yes, Kitty, <laughs> what do you know about it? Oh. Oh, well, look at that. Don't feel too bad, huh? Because I don't know anything about it either. Bye. Oh, hi, George. Yeah, Gabriel. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look, it looks like we're going to have about um, 300 people at the next meeting. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll see you then. Bye. Uh, excuse me. May we have quiet, please? Thank you. First, let me say how delighted we are that so many of you have shown up for this staff association meeting. Now, we have some very important facts for you. And we have someone here who is going to present them. And it is my pleasure at this time to introduce this person to you. So here he is. Here's George Brown. Allow me to present to you a chart which the university administration is pleased to call salary arrangers. Salary arrangers for clerical, secretarial, and technical staff. In other words, you and me. Now, you will see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten grades of one, two, three, four, five, six steps each. Simple, eh? This is what is known as university gobbledygook or meaningless claptrap to confuse the workers. Now, according to our records, there are 23 of you or 2% in grade one. In grade two, there are 90 of you, or 10%. In grade three, 350 of you, or 34%. And in grade four, 240, or 24%, which means that in grades one through four, earning anywhere from $4,162 a year to $7,221 a year is 70% of you. Now, in grade five, there are 110 or 12% of you. In grade six, 90 or 9%. In grade seven, 50 or 5%. And in grade eight, 27 of you, or 3%, which means that in grades five through eight, earning anywhere from $6,674 a year to $11,560 a year is 30% of you. Now, those of you who are quick in mathematics will already have deduced that 70% added to 30% makes 100% or all of us, uh, which means that in grades nine and 10, uh, there is a zero, a zilch, not a living soul in the top two higher grades. Now. Taking this chart as a whole with 10 grades of six steps each, that is approximately 60 steps. And moving through the chart as the university administration would have us move, i.e. step by step, with a minimum of six months in every step, it would take you approximately 30 years to raise yourself from a salary of $4,162 to the highest salary you can earn here, the vast sum of $14,628 at which time your 14,000 would be worth approximately less than the 4,000 with which you started, which leaves you nowhere. And that is exactly where the university administration would like us to remain, nowhere. And that's exactly where we will remain without a union as a legal bargaining unit. Thank you. Ian, 
was always like a dirty word in my family. Years ago, my father was on strike, and uh, outside agitators came in, and they had riots, and people were beaten up. It was terrible. Sure, there are bad things about unions. I ought to know. In the 50s, when my husband was on strike, we lived on $25 a week strike pay and whatever money he could make, you know, in part-time work. And who wants to hire a striker? We went through our savings in about four months. So if I can say that I'm for a union, then you can depend on it. This is what we should have, because we really need the bargaining power of a union. Why is this? Why is it? The names of the ringleaders, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, you win, you win, Yes, sir. Name number one, sir. Gabrielle Martin. Name number two, sir. George Brown. Name number three, sir. Uh, uh, I, uh, I don't think you're gonna like this, sir. Damn it, man. Never mind my likes or my dislikes. Give me the name. Give me the name. Yes, sir. It's your secretary, Ursula Waters, sir. Mr. Smalley, uh, should there be any error in the third name, bad things could happen to you. There's no error, sir. No, sir, that uh, would be out of the question, uh, sir. Uh, perhaps, sir, we could try uh, intimidation? Intimidation, this morning, that's what we need. Good idea, sir. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you see, Smalley, ultimately what we want to do is assimilate. Do you, do you know what I mean by that, Smalley? Assimilate. Sure. See, the, the workers must learn to, to embrace those who govern them, to, to enjoy the, the administration. Assimilate. Yes, sir. Assimilate. Intimidation. Yeah. The simulation. <laughs> Dear Miss Lombardi, your association with certain persons involved in union activities has been noted. If you persist in these activities, it will be to your disadvantage at this establishment. Gabriel Barton. Gabrielle. Who is this? Gabrielle, why don't you knock off all this union business if you know what's good for you? Look, would you tell me who please, this is? Please, Gabrielle, please. Look, who is this? Here's your nomination form for negotiating committee, and you sign it right here under the union part. Sarah, uh... I've been uh, doing a, a lot of thinking lately, and uh, I, I was wondering if the union was the only way. Uh, I mean, uh, well, if the administration were to voluntarily recognize the staff association... Uh, well, I, I don't understand. You were the one who told me that the union was the only solution. But that would accomplish... Our... George, I oh. just heard about your promotion. Congratulations. You deserve it. Promotion? You didn't tell me... I... I didn't get a chance to say anything. I... Oh, look at I'm sorry. I didn't know I was interrupting anything. Um, George, I just dropped by for the nomination. Oh, there it is. I've got a Xerox. Do you want to sign it? And I'll just Xerox it and get out of your way. Um, Gabriel, I don't think George is going to sign. He's uh, had second thoughts about the union. Sarah, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Don't joke about something. George, what's she talking about? I'm... I'm not going to run on the union platform. I... Yeah. I see, George. It's right there. Is 
Sarah, you know, you have to learn to, to think for yourself. Uh, I mean, just because Gabriel thinks that the union is the only way, it doesn't mean that I have to... You've got to learn to think for yourself. Yes, George. You're right. Um, hello? Uh, I'd just like to say a couple of words of introduction before Ursula speaks. Uh, Ursula Waters, as you know, is our president of the association, and she is again running for president on a platform of unionization. You all know Sam, of course, and uh, this is Sarah Lombardi, who is running for treasurer. And I'm Gabrielle Barton. I'm running for vice president. Um, you probably noticed that George Brown is not here. He has decided to run on a platform of voluntary recognition. Um, I say that this would be a sweetheart union, which would be management controlled. And if we accepted it, we would be right back where we started from. And now um, I give you Ursula Waters. Before getting into the business on hand on this very important meeting before the election, I have a letter I, I want you to hear. To all staff members, I want you all to think seriously about the activities of our staff association. After much soul searching, I have decided that talk of unionization is in truth destructive to our best community interests. Mr. Smalley has announced the formation of a grievance procedure and assures us that the administration wishes to voluntarily recognize our association. Contempt of authority cannot be tolerated if the community is to survive. I have been ordered under veiled threats of dismissal to sign this letter. Well, I'm not going to. No. Although I know I cannot legally be fired in helping in the formation of this union, I am full certain such pressure will be brought to bear on me in the future as to make staying on in this university impossible. So I have decided to, uh, to leave seek work elsewhere. However, and I cannot stress this more forcefully, that you must not give up in your attempt to form this union. Now, as I will no longer be here, I cannot allow my name to stand for re-election. But I want to nominate someone who I know will work very hard on your behalf. I nominate as president of the staff association on a union platform, Gabriel Barton. Uh, um, I, I don't know if this scares you, but it makes me mad. It makes me mad that management can do something like this to somebody like Ursula Waters. And I didn't want to mention this before, but George Brown is not running because management got to him and offered him a promotion. And others of us have been bribed, bullied, and intimidated. And why? Why are they doing this to us? What are they afraid of? Are they scared that we're going to make a decent wage, that they're going to have to treat us like human beings? Now, I say we must have a union. 
We must be a legal bargaining union. We must, we must be able to fight back. Now, whether or not you believe in a union, whether or not you want one, I hope to see every single one of you at the elections because it's become a, a much, much more important issue than I ever thought it was. Thank you. Women aren't interested in unions. You know what the young women around here say? They say they're only in the job for two or three years, then they're going to leave and get married. They're apathetic. They don't want to get involved. I'd like to be uh, as brief as possible this evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, uh, I think we're all aware of the uh, problems that face us as workers here at the university, and uh, if you boil them down, it, it comes to a basic lack of communication between uh, us as workers and the administration, which would be solved by our program of voluntary recognition of the staff association, uh, because that would thereby open the channel. Uh, uh, I want you to consider the funds of this uh, university as a pie. Uh, now, certain demands are made on those funds, uh, say, uh, administration salaries and uh, new buildings, sports programs, professor salaries, books, papers, pencils, secretary salaries. Uh, uh, you can see uh, that we, as workers, do not have the, the right or the expertise to tell the administration what to do with their money, uh, but we do have the right to have our, our grievances heard. Uh, now I'd like to introduce to you our uh, candidate for vice president. Uh, you all know her, Miss Barbie Day. <laughs> Professional. Let's work through the staff association. And now I'd like to introduce our last speaker on our platform for unionization, Ms. Sarah Lombardi, who is running for treasurer. I would like to take this final opportunity before the election to tell you that if elected, we plan to form a union. I would also like to say that I've had considerable experience in handling funds, and I'm sure I can do a good job for you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Like, I don't know what I did wrong. I, I tried everything I knew. I, I did. Gabriel, will you stop punishing yourself? No, You've done Sarah, the best you can do. Sarah, you don't understand. Those people are scared, and I don't know how to get... It's the result. Yeah? yeah? By, by how much? Okay. We won! I mean, we won! That was only the beginning. The first small victory in a struggle that went on for two more years. What followed was hundreds of meetings, 
the difficult task of learning the Labour Relations Act of Ontario and drawn out legal battles with the administration. This has been a fictionalized account of what happened at York University in Toronto and on February the 18th, 1976, three years after their struggle for a union first began, they finally started negotiations on their first contract. <laughs>